I'll start with the process. Councilor Spector and I have been working on this ordinance uh, for about, well, we started over a year ago, and um, we actually drafted it last summer and presented it to the full council last September. When an ordinance is presented to the full council, it from that point goes to various committees, certain committees review certain ordinances and weigh in on them. This particular ordinance was view, reviewed by seven committees uh, up till this point, which took a number of a month, a months, uh, six, seven months, and the ordinance was approved by each of the committees. There was no opposition to that. After this hearing, the matter will go to the full city council to be voted up or down, and it needs to pass two votes on two different nights in order for it to to uh, make its way to the mayor's desk. And once the mayor signs it, it becomes law. If the mayor doesn't sign it, it can become, it can become law if six councilors override a mayoral veto. Um, that's the process, the possible process. I'd like to go over briefly how the ordinance functions, how the ordinance functions. Uh, this ordinance, the intention is to place a citywide ban on both uh, on, on, on all residential businesses, uh, the single-use, the thin-film, single-use plastic bags, most of them, not all of them. Uh, and again, that applies not only to supermarkets, but it applies also to uh, to to non-supermarkets, all, all commercial, if it passes and takes effect. And specifically, the prohibition and, and the function of the ordinance is that um, no retail establishment, no retail food establishment, or retail service establishment, which is defined in the ordinance, can use bags unless they are reusable bags, and reusable does include plastic if it's over a certain thickness, um, and over a certain thickness is when it becomes reusable because that's when people tend to reuse, reuse those bags rather than throw them out after a single use. It also includes biodegradable or compostable bags. Uh, cloth bags, for example. Exempted from the ordinance are thin film plastic bags that, that contain dry cleaning. Uh, the newspapers get, that get thrown on people's lawns, those are exempted, as well as produce, meat, bulk foods, wet items, and other similar merchandise that, uh, that are not at point of sale and are, uh, and, are, and are used frequently in supermarkets. Those are not banned by this ordinance. Uh, and that's similar to other ordinances. The way it works is the, the way it's enforced is that the health department or the mayor's designee, if they learn there's a violation, and this they're not going to go around looking for violations, this will be based on complaints only because this ordinance doesn't mandate any additional uh, inspections. If they, if they respond to a complaint and a business is not using the, the required bags, uh, they will, they'll first get a warning, and uh, before any, any any fine has to be paid, and this is because we hope that if there are violators, they'll they'll conform their conduct so that it's legal, and uh, the purpose is not to make money off this. If they don't conform after the warning, they'll get fifty dollars for a first offense and one hundred dollars for a, a, a subsequent offense, and all, all for all subsequent offenses. Uh, that's the way it functions, and again, it's to change the behavior and not to make the city money. The ordinance as written, and all of these things are subject to amendment, the ordinance as written uh, takes effect on January 1st of 2016, and uh, businesses will have until then to comply. For those businesses that feel that it would be a hardship to comply with the ordinance, we allow in the ordinance uh, deferments, periods of up to six months, if they can demonstrate to the mayor or the health department or the mayor's designee, one of two things. The first way that a business could demonstrate a hardship that could result in a deferment would be to, to, to prove that they would suffer significant economic injury by making the change to what the ordinance requires. The other form of, um, of, of deferment that could be granted could be to a hardship that is defined by where there's no readily, readily available compliance substitute. So if there's no substitute, uh, businesses can get deferments until they have one, until they have an adequate substitute. Businesses can get to 
three total six-month deferments if they meet the standard required by the mayor, by the mayor or uh, the health department or the, or the mayor's designee. So that's the general functioning of the ordinance. Um, Councillor Spector will now briefly discuss why we thought it necessary and important to bring this ordinance forward. Good afternoon. Mm -hmm. You know, usually Northampton is a major in environmental uh, issues and has been for years. And actually, this particular issue, when we started talking about it a little over a year ago, we still, we wouldn't have been one of the first, but we would have been in that kind of top tier of communities leading the way. Because if it was only Northampton passing this, you know, one town, say, you know, does it really make any difference? Part of the reason towns like us pass ordinances such as this be is because it's leadership and other towns follow suit. A year later, what started when we first started talking about this just a year ago, and we're thinking, well, we think this will pass, you know, it might be a little edgy. It's not at all. It's almost mainstream. <laughs> California, 40 million people live there. The legislature, by a wide margin, passed a similar ordinance. The European Union, mm -hmm. over 350 million people live there, has a similar ban on these kind of bags. China, not necessarily known for its progressive environmental policy, <laughs> is banning the use of plastic bags. You just take those, there are other countries as well, just take those three together, you're talking about, I don't know, maybe 35% of the population of the whole planet. In the state of Massachusetts, there are a number of towns and cities, regretfully, we wanted to be the first, but we're not the first. <laughs> there are a number passing this ban. And there are a whole slew of reasons, I know many of you will add to my short list, I'll just give you a few. First, it's just, it's just the downright litter from it. Remember when that term was used? It's just the litter. Because these bags, you may hear from some of the folks who oppose the ordinance, we hope they're here today, is this thing that, well, they're all recyclable. In fact, the research shows, and there's been extensive research, that these particular bags, this kind of single-use plastic bag, if we're talking about these thin bags that you get at the cash register when you're leaving, that those bags just don't get recycled. In fact, only 12%. So it's one of the lowest recycling rates. I will commend places like Stop and Shop and other uh, corporate entities who have tried to really get these recycled. In California, big corporations really tried. They said, look, because they, they knew if we got these numbers for recycling up, that one of the key arguments would dissipate. The uh, American Petroleum Institute as well has tried various programs and fudged a lot of their numbers to show that you can recycle them. In fact, they don't get recycled. The DPW often talked about just outside of Big Y, and some of you may remember this, there'd be like a wall of these bags. And once a week I heard from the DPW, they would go out and just pick up those bags. So it's not just the litter and the unsightfulness, they're actually very dangerous to wildlife in that huge plastic swirl in the Pacific Ocean, you know, the Texas-sized plastic swirl. If you, if you don't know about it, I'm sorry to bring you that information, but there's this Texas-sized place of garbage, mostly plastic. These bags make up a big percentage of that. There are, it's not just a small amount, it's not just these little bags. We use, just in this little town of Northampton, 30,000 people, we use 10 to 12 million bags. You know, that big ball out there it weighs almost 300 pounds. Even Bill Dwight couldn't lift it up. We moved it here. <laughs> that bag has 18,000 bags. Over a 10-year period, I just thought, well, I won't go to when the bags first started use. You're talking about somewhere around six to 8,000 of those balls. They stretch, just that ball stretches six miles. If you took over this 10-year period, which I didn't know whether when they started, but I certainly know it's at least 10 years, those bags would stretch something like three times around the Earth. So, and they, when they get into the ocean, one of the problems is they biodegrade, they do biodegrade, but into these very tiny plastic components, which are then ingested by the wildlife. So it's known that this is really a detriment to the environment. In addition, it's costly when we're picking these things up. They don't, and they, by the way, they don't biodegrade when you put them in the landfill because there's the whole aero, or aerodynamic quality, aerodynamic, um, uh, 
the anaerobic, is am I getting the right word? Yeah. They're looking at Susan Blake here. But they don't, they don't biodegrade, and so they take up a lot of room in the landfill. So they're neither recycled, nor are they able to go to landfills easily. There are a whole other slew of reasons why these bags environmentally are detrimental. There are very few reasons, there are very few reasons why we should continue using them. One reason people say, well, why don't you, for newspapers, for example, we went to the uh, Chamber Economic Development Committee, and we reached out, by the way, to all the interests here. We tried our best with an article in the newspaper. Councillor Adams has been on the radio a few times. There was an editorial in the newspaper. We sent out emails. We tried to contact those who we really thought might have objections to this so we could try and talk to them and see what were their objections. The Economic Development Committee reached out to all of the stores here. They decided to have a meeting and we wanted to go and they said, we don't want you guys there. <laughs> okay. So the people we have heard from on the bags, actually, the two, are people who you would think would be most affected and those are folks who own both State Street and Syrios. Mm. And they've already started to do this. Yeah. Right? They, they were saying, this is a good thing, we hope everybody does it. So we hope that everyone will get on board. And one of the things I was saying is it, is, it may be that we've gotten used to these bags, and one reason we decided not to ban them for the newspaper was it would be a hardship for the newspapers. There isn't an easy alternative for them to use. There are no longer paper boys delivering, remember paper boys so delivering the newspaper. So they have to put it in something. That is not the case at point of sale. There are alternatives. They are not onerous. And so I think there are very few arguments to be made why we should continue this and very strong arguments why we should ban them. So just briefly, the purpose of this forum, the purpose is to hear from, the, from you, from the public, about, about your views on the ordinance and the, and, the, and the matter, and to give you the chance to weigh in. Um, no votes will be taken tonight. We're, we're not delivering it tonight. That's not the purpose of this meeting. Uh, we're going to have plenty of time to do that, and, and, and I believe the council will take this up at the April 16th meeting uh, this month. So feel free to come to that if you want to weigh in at that point. You can weigh in before uh, the council meeting begins. We have a public comment session. You can feel free to do that. But again, no votes will be taken. Um, and also, we're not here to debate. We're here to listen. And if you if you engage us, um, I mean, you, if you have a simple question or something like that, you can ask it. But we're not here. You know, you can, you can certainly state your points for or against it. But we're not going to be engaging in, in a debate about the merits of it here tonight. Um, we're here to listen. And here are the rules. Each, anyone may speak. We're not going to time it. Um, I do ask you to, to say everything you have to say, but please say it succinctly. Um, and, if you're, and if you're running on and on, I, I may remind you that others want to speak and ask you to, excuse me, to curtail it. Um, and if, if, if others have made your point, if you could perhaps give the short version if you want to make the same point. And, um, and emails. Um, people may read emails if others have given them emails that they have requested to be read at this meeting. Um, otherwise, the emails that we are getting will be submitted for the public record. Um, and, and lastly, for those who are speaking, if you could just state your name and address, please. Thank you. So, we don't, we don't have an order here, so people would just like to, you know, if someone wants to start and go up to the podium, whoever, feel free, please, please. Sir, okay. uh, I'm John Galstead, 20 Ward Avenue. Just a couple of questions, Paul, on things you said. Uh, with regard to the newspapers being an exemption, you explained why that is. Is that uh, why is that true for the dry cleaning as well? Is, it, is there no substitute like paper sheets or things like that for dry cleaning? One of the things we've done is look at what other communities have done. And did look at, and I did explore, are there alternatives to the bags or some other 
thing that the newspaper could be in, and there doesn't really seem to be. I only have tangential and anecdotal information about the dry cleaning, but it does seem to be um, in most of the, we have not seen any that actually, do, do you know of any that actually also be under dry cleaning bags? I, I'm not saying you should or shouldn't have this. Second question was you mentioned that they do take up a large amount of landfill space. Uh, do you have, can you quantify that no. in any way? Well, I'm not sure they take up, I don't know that I said that. If I said that, I think I said it takes up a large amount of that Texas plastic place where they're a, a, they're a oh, good I component. You were to the what, they don't the biodegrade. Landfill. They don't biodegrade. Yes, that I imagine. Okay, but you, we have no data on. Well, part of the reason is, part of the reason, not only are they not recycled, they do end up in the landfill, but they only even don't end up in the landfill in that great a number. So, yeah. you know, because just go out and look in a number of places and you'll see a lot well, of that. So that. we don't even know the percentage of that. There was a problem with volume in the landfill, uh, with, with volume specifically. I know they don't uh, degrade. Do they take up 20%, 1%? Well, don't know. Don't know that. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak? Oh, actually, yeah. Um, I just want to say my name is Lenny Creed, and I'm the founder of the Bagshare Project, and I need some bags. Yeah. Great. Good demonstrations Great. of what plastic does and to our wildlife. And I'd like to present you all with some of these. That's great. That's great. You can go have to share like inside our sun. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we're in the process now of working with Cereals Market uh, because they also want to go paper bag free. So um, I think this ordinance is a great thing, uh, but I would like to say that paper bags also use a tremendous amount of resources, and we are in the process of sewing up to a thousand bags for Cereals Market. Here's one of our sewers here, and the bag share, if you don't know about it, uh, people go to the store and they borrow a bag when they forget their bag. So that's also a great alternative um, when you go shopping. Thank you. Um, thank you, and let's hope it passes. I have a question. What do you do about things like it deals and steals? They might have king one in a plastic bag. Are they allowed to sell stuff that comes packaged in a bag? I'm sorry. If you first, can you just start by saying your name and address, please, for, for the record? <laughs> oh. Francis Crow, Three Lane Worthy Road, Northampton. It, it, it doesn't apply to those pre bag items. Doesn't apply. Correct. It, it, for example, all those things you, you know, and, and, and pre packaged <laughs> plastic items, you know, in, in a supermarket, for example, it does not apply to that. The other question I would have why does the city council chamber have amplification for people like me? I have good hearing aids, but I don't, don't understand everything you say. And if you just had amplification, every one of you be able to speak, your voice would be amplified. It would be an accessible city council. I, I believe NCTV is, is going to uh, enhance the, all the technology in the room, including um, amplification. Thank you. They're working on it. Okay. <laughs> Other comments? I actually have something to read from Hollis Wheeler, who lives at 25 Denise Court in Northampton. Okay. Could you state your name and address, please? Sure. sure. My name is Jessica Tanner. I live at 142 West Street in Northampton. So Hollis emailed me and said, uh, so these are her comments. There are huge debts. We don't want to leave our children and grandchildren. We seldom stop to think the national debt will be far more forgiving to their wallets than other colossal inherited debts will be to their own lives. I speak of practices of ours which are laying on them the poison debt, the climate change debt, the mass extinction debt. Of the same importance is the garbage debt. All these seemingly non-monetary debts are far from that. 
They will have to be paid for in dollars as well as quality of life by those of the future. The ubiquitous thin plastic bag, the non-biodegradable waste will throw away thin plastic bag, ranks high in the contribution to literally mountains of avoidable garbage. We well know it litters the land, but little known, and far worse, thousands of tons of it, and its cousin plastic litter, the oceans leading to danger and death in forms of sea life, even including large, the large mammals. Plastic bags are a petroleum product and other unwelcome parts of the carbon debt. It seems like such a small thing, a tiny convenience, this bag is far from innocuous. Let Northampton once again join leaders in the country in curing instead of causing ills such as these. We need this bag man as one important method to pay our way as we go, to stand up and take on our own responsibilities so this generation doesn't heap more problems and more garbage upon those among us, among us who are yet very young and yet to be born. I'm aware the plastic bag industry wants money now, not responsibility for environmental and financial problems it creates for others in the future. Therefore, we must help them do their fair part. An inadequate ban of 1.5 mils on plastic bags has led them to sneak past the intention of bans by slightly increasing the mills, leading them to contribute even more heavier plastics, increasing their carbon debt. I urge an adoption of a weight that will cost, that will be cost prohibitive for them, 5 mils. I'll do it. And I have my own comments to, to put out. Uh, let us remember back to the time when plastic bags were first introduced in grocery stores. The reaction was mostly negative, but the plastic bag industry continued to force bags on the customers until they became the norm, and now people think that they cannot live without them. I remember going shopping with my mom as a teen and receiving plastic bags full of groceries and complaining with her on the way out about the bags because the handles were uncomfortable, hold would break, and they would fall over as soon as you set them down, spilling their contents. We preferred the paper bags because they would stand up and they were sturdy. The plastic bags would quickly accumulate in our home and we could never figure out what to do with them all. Even today, the plastic bag industry only recycles five, I've read 5% uh, of these bags uh, at best. The switch from paper bags to plastic bags is not about what was best for the customer or what customers wanted. It was about stores saving money because plastic bags are cheaper to produce and transport. These bags provided by grocery stores are not free. We are paying for them through increased food costs. Wouldn't it be nice if the stores did away with the single-use bags and the cost savings were shifted to customers through lower food prices? Many stores are already doing this and the stores are saving money. I've been using these the cloth bags for many years and once it became a habit, it was automatic. When I think about the future uh, for my two-year-old son at home, I'm afraid. I've watched too many documentaries on fashion. Um, frankly, I'm afraid about his future. Because he's growing up in a toxic plastic, plastic world where ocean animals, and uh, Paul Specter, you've already mentioned this, uh, many animals are dying of starvation, suffocation, or the toxicity of these bags and other plastics. We're eating seafood that's contaminated with plastic. The ocean plankton, which produce more oxygen than the rainforest for the planet, are drastically being reduced because of the toxic plastic swimming beside them. How would this impact the long-term oxygen levels on the planet? And uh, many ocean animals or creatures uh, rely on the plankton for food. Well, I realize that the problem of human overpopulation is a grave one. There must be a better solution than toxic plastic rendering the population <coughs> infertile. Why did we travel down this dead-end path so a small number of company owners and their investors could make hundreds of billions of dollars? Well, unfortunately, no amount of money will filter out all of the tiny plastic bits from the world's oceans. We are stuck with this toxic soup now for thousands of years. So the only thing that we can do at this point is prevent more plastic from floating and blowing out into the oceans. We need to eliminate the source, sources of all plastic. I'm in favor of the Northampton City Council passing a plastic bag and ordinance, but I have some concerns with the current version. The three cities in Mass that have passed bag bans cited a minimum bag thickness of three mils. The city of Newburyport on September 2014, the city of Newton in January 2015, the city of Cambridge, uh, March 2015. The Northampton Ordinance specifies 1.5 mils. Early plastic bag bans specified 1.5 because that is how thin single-use plastic shopping bags <coughs> be had, that's how thin they'd become to save money in the manufacturing process. After these bag bans were adopted, plastic bag manufacturers started producing thicker plastic shopping bags, uh, which they were originally, 
to get around the ordinance. Better to make less profit than no profit at all. I have heard that in Brookline, the individuals who got a bag band pass regret not increasing the bag thickness to three mils. They adopted a thickness of 2.25 mils. Uh, because now the stores are using single-use plastic shopping bags that are 2.25 mils in Brookline uh, so that they can be in compliance with the Brookline bag ban. There's no point in my mind in passing a bag ban if single-use plastic bags will continue to be used in stores. Right now, Texas is considering a 4 or 5 mil thickness for its plastic bag ban. Mm -hmm. I urge the Northampton City Council to adopt a ban without loopholes. I noticed that Stop and Shop is now selling thicker, quote, reusable plastic bags at their checkout for 10 cents each. I'm presuming to get around a future Northampton bag ban. And though it will be great to get rid of, uh, for the environment to get rid of these single use plastic bags, it'll be even better if shoppers switch to reusable bags instead. I was mentioned that the paper bags use a lot of energy for manufacturing transport. Uh, so I would suggest uh, some other towns have adopted a fee of 10 cents or more for the paper bags at the cash register. And uh, I think that this incentive should be added to the Northampton ordinance and encourage people to use reusable, uh, truly reusable bags, uh, preferably, preferably compostable. Uh, and I would also like to see the, this ordinance include the elimination of other thin plastic bags in the future, including produce bags, new, newspaper bags, and dry cleaning bags. Uh, there are some ordinances out there that do include dry cleaning bags uh, and maybe produce bags. In the documentary, Trash Jeremy Irons, uh, visits a couple of stores that have eliminated all packaging on products and shopping bags. People bring in their own containers for uh, to collect the items, so it is possible. And the current wording of the ordinance, uh, I believe Jesse, I mean, you mentioned that stores have three up to three extension periods. I'd like to see that extension, the uh, number of extension periods, reduced to one. And I personally would be willing to work on an educational campaign to educate uh, Northampton residents about using reusable bags when they shop. Thank, Thank you. Are there other comments? Um, good evening. My name is Steve Elkins. I own Webs. Um, I reside at Two Rock Wings on Fairfield. My business is at 75 Service Center Road. Um, I think you have an admirable idea, but I think you guys need to take a step back and look at the context of some of the things that have been passed in the last year. So we have a stormwater fund. That cost of my business was $5,000. Um, Massachusetts just passed a sick, sick law. Good, fine. My cost just my retail part of that business was $5,000. Bags is $2,000. I can, I can go along with that. My bags actually are, are okay, as, low, as the ordinance is written. So I don't have any skin in the game. But I ask you guys, that, so if I take the $5,000, 5000 or $2,000, 5% of my profits from my retail store, assuming my business stays flat. Okay. So I ask you guys to take a step back, think about the business owners in the community that have had that, and I had a sick, I have a sick pay policy before that. So I was paying sick, sick days already. Okay, I have to pay more, and that's okay, and I can deal with that. But you guys need to take a step back and think about the costs of, other costs that have been added on to business owners in the community that they now have to take this on as well. I think your ideas are very admirable, but I think you need to take a step back and look at the timing, and maybe it's not quite right. And maybe we need to think about maybe an extra year or something like that so people can absorb the other costs that they've been added on to, which are all fine and they all make sense. But you can't keep layering costs on the business community and expect them to be here. Okay, so anything else? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other comments? Is that all? I just walked in, so I don't know what was said, but what? Hey, sir, if you could come to the podium. Yeah, fine. If you could state your name and address, please. 
Yeah, my name is Mark Rosenzweig. I'm the operator and owner of Acme Surplus in Florence. I live in Williamsburg. And I just walked into the room, so I don't know what I've missed. But I was wondering what data you have for the impact on the uh, zone. And what data you have for the impact, the negative impact on the local retailers. Direct question. I don't have the specific from the California. You know, California passed a similar ban. Uh, it was a year ago, and I read some of the data from that. One of the things that tends to happen, and I believe Stop and Shop um, here, if you remember, it was a few years ago. They started encouraging people. I, I can't remember how they did it. Whether they paid people, mm -hmm. where they took money off. What started to happen was people started bringing in bags like this. And what happened, and I think we became the number one store in the state for Stop and Shop of people bringing in bags. It was some number. Susan, do you remember? Was it 40%? I don't 40%? remember the number, but the Northampton Stop and Shop was the store that had the most participation in that program. Right. It, it was a startlingly high number. And so to address that cost issue, what I read in the California thing is once you have a whole community and you start to change the culture, a lot of people start using these bags. These don't cost the store owner anything. You start to have a culture where everybody in you comes, well, is that going to happen? Well, if anybody's been to Europe, this is what people use in Europe. So it is done where you know, we've gotten used to a certain thing, but people also get used to other ways of shopping. And more and more people, if you think five, even five years ago, there were very few people bringing in bags. So it's really become something that's been happening percentage-wise. I'll try and get the California, I could try and get that California stuff out to you what they've done. Well, again, I don't want to be repetitive because I wasn't here, but I gather that the proposal is to uh, affect the waste, the solid waste. It, that's only one, one component of it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let me point out that in California, then everybody's on a level playing field. When you hamper and um, make it more difficult for local retailers to operate, the other towns around here, um, you're making the local retailers in Northampton less competitive, and they will pay a price. Uh, is it worth it? And also, the local people who live in Northampton are going to shop elsewhere. Matter of fact, they'll probably shop more in other towns because those retailers will be more competitive. It's a difficult retail environment. I think uh, you might consider that. Thank you. If I could just point out that this ordinance starts, if it passes, it begins in 2016. For those businesses who are experiencing the hardship that they can demonstrate, they can get up to three six-month periods, which would take them into June of 2017. At that point, there could be a state ban on the same exact, on this, exa this exact issue. We're putting businesses who comply with this ordinance ahead of the curve of what is certainly going to happen. Is there any other public comment? You're, you're hurting businesses. Hi, I'm Tina Ingman, um, Park Hill Road. Thank you very much for this ordinance. We're trying to get this ordinance passed. Um, I'm very interested to know if you looked at the idea of charging for all bags with the retailer charging and with the idea that um, that money is already built into the cost of what they're selling. So and this, why you might have rejected that. Since that's a direct question. We're not allowed to, we don't have the authority in the city council to do that okay. in our ordinances. <clears throat> Correct? I believe so. We, we, can't, we can't set those kind of fees or do that. Uh, the council president is here. Do you know the answer to that? I don't believe we can do we, that. We can't impose, we can't require private entities to um, charge fees. We don't have that authority, and probably shouldn't. So the other communities that do that in California, or you know, I've heard of communities that do that, so that people don't use, so that it becomes a culture of people bringing their bags because they don't want to pay the. Fees. California legislature did do that, but that covered the whole state. I Our see. legislature could and might do that in their bill that is moving through the legislature. Councilor okay. Councilor O'Donnell pointed out that um, he said that Cambridge has done that. 
proposal, yeah. if you want to explain. Sure. I mean, in the recent ordinance that Cambridge just passed in March, um, there's two components. One is paper and one is plastic. So you can ask paper or plastic, I guess. And if you choose paper, you actually, uh, the, the retail outlet is required to um, charge a fee. The city doesn't collect the fee, but the, the store charges it. Whether that gets challenged, I don't know. I don't know on what authority they do that, but they, they have I, to. I mean, I just think that would help the retailers. We could look into that. California, actually, what they do is the same thing. And it was part of the work of a negotiation with store owners to say, let us charge, so it, it, they are charging a fee. I, I actually don't support that. And, and the reason why is because any business has the option of doing that anyhow. Uh, and, and if a business chooses to absorb um, the cost, they can absorb it, or they can mandate it without it being the ordinance. So I, I actually look at that as being more onerous towards businesses, and, and, and as we see, there are certain members of the business community who already oppose it. So I, I hear you. I know it's a model, and, but for, I, I oppose it. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, I just want to go on record as saying at this juncture um, of humanity, we have to move beyond what's convenient. Thank you. Thank you. Council President, did you want to add something? I uh, simply was going to expand on the, my comments about the legality of imposing a fee, uh, having private entities collect a fee. Um, you can facilitate it. You can certainly recommend it, I think. I don't think that you can mandate it. I, I think under Mass General Law, um, we can't mandate the collection of monies from from other agencies that have done come under the city's aegis. But I, I could be wrong, but I'd be really surprised if that were the case. Thank you. Are there other comments? And also, if you've already made comments, you can, you, can, you can make additional comments, but I would like those who haven't spoken who, like, who would like to to go ahead and speak first. My name is uh, Mary Markward uh, from Ava Circle. I have been using reusable bags for countless years. My question, and I apologize for arriving late so I didn't hear the whole introductory statement, but is there any look at how we need to bring our garbage to the refill, to the landfill? Are we going to be able to look at eliminating those plastic bags? And then going back to paying a fee and bring a huge jug and show them what we have and dump it versus, I mean, we all have to bring our garbage in plastic. Yeah. Yeah. Seems to if you're looking at me, I'll answer. We, we have I think you That's an start, interesting. Yeah. We, haven't, we haven't even looked at that, okay. that part of it. It's, I think it's an interesting question. But it, it just, to me, the whole idea just comes down to a culture of, like, I travel with reusable bags. My family laughs at me, and so be it. But it can be done. Actually, uh, I believe Mr. Parsons hasn't spoken. There are a couple in the back who have not spoken. So if you, Mr. Par Mr. Parsons, sure. can you come forward? Sure. My uh, name is Michael Parsons, 28 Bayberry Lane, uh, also chairman of the city's Public Works Commission. Um, I too arrived late, so I'm not sure that you heard comment from the Reuse Committee. Have they spoken? We have not. They have not. Okay. So the Reuse Committee is a uh, subcommittee of the Public Works Commission. The Reuse Committee came out um, in very strong support of this ordinance. Um, they also have further aspirations, but they think this is a good start. And I can report that the Public Works Commission took this under its review um, at several meetings and um, didn't take a formal vote on it, but uh, had no uh, negative comment regarding it, which I would interpret as being supported. So, Thank you. I'm Jessica Gifford, Grove Street, and I am really happy this is um, hopefully happening. I'm definitely in support of a plastic bag ban. I agree that I think we need to move beyond convenience. I think if entire countries can do this, then we can do this. Um, as a consumer, I would be very happy when I forget my reusable bags to pay an extra 10 cents. If I, I don't see people necessarily leaving town and paying for gas to shop outside of town for the convenience of plastic bags. So I, I think it's a really important thing. Right? 
Thank you. I'm Ann Lombard, 11 Allen Place, and I'd like to speak from the point of view of the trash. I'm part of a church group here that helps to clean the bike path and all kinds of these plastic bags end up there. Uh, I've been to Guatemala and also heard of someone who just came back from Nepal that where they were used to paper, the plastic, they don't know how to deal with it because there's no recycling. It's all over the trees, all over the public places. It's a tragedy and we all know about the ocean, the enormous number of plastic bags in the ocean. So I really support this organization. Thank you. Now, yeah, um, Lenny Free from Cummington, and I just had a question concerning the statewide ban on plastic bags and uh, whether or not that you know where that is and how soon that might happen. I, I do know. Well, I know a few months ago, before the latest gubernatorial election, I was speaking to our representative, who was very confident that. Finally, this, it's, been, it's been in committee and hasn't moved out of committee for many years. And he assured me, absolutely, this was going to move out of committee this year. It was going to get there. I think he's still right. The question is, in a, will the governor, how big a vote will it be? Could it override a governor's veto? Would he veto it? But I think it is moving. It has been stalled for many years, but it is now moving. And Peter Coca said he strongly believes that by, I, he said the fall, that was this fall. I think now he might want to say maybe a year from now, but he said it's it's going and it's going to pass. Sir, from the top, sir, did you want to? I'm all done. Thanks. Is there any other further comment? Anyone else like to speak? Quick question: Does the state law correspond in terms of thickness to this this ordinance, the, the one that's being considered by the state? I don't know. I mean, I. I from what I know, there are various bills. I don't know what, what will advance. I'm not, I, I, I don't know. Right. Can I read the letter that was asked? The one letter? Oh, oh, please, yes. So I was asked to read this. I was sent this email. And Councilor Adams said if we were requested to read an email, we talked about this. If we got hundreds, we weren't going to do it. But we didn't get hundreds. I have one. And uh, this is from Clint Richmond, who is the from the Mass uh, Sierra Club. He's a legislative action committee. And he's in charge of the plastics campaign, dear Councilor Specter. Um, I am pleased to hear that Northampton is one of the many communities currently considering a ban and that you are one of the proponents of the ordinance. The state chapter has been working on the issue for 10 years and has been heartened by the recent growing movement in favor of eliminating all forms of unnecessary plastic waste. In the past months, the cities of Newburyport, Newton, and Cambridge have passed strong single use plastic bag ordinances. All of them follow the Massachusetts Sierra Club recommendation that the minimum thickness of a reusable bag is three mils. You could also allow your city officials to set a higher minimum through regulation. Large cities such as Dallas and Portland have defined the, back, the minimum at four mils. The town of Williamstown will be voting next month on a proposed bylaw with four mils. We certainly support four mils to avoid the harmful substitution of thicker bags for the existing thin ones that we have observed under various inadequate bans here in the Commonwealth and across the country. Mm -hmm. Is there any further comment? Um, I just, uh, Jenny Fleming, I'm from 15 Drive Street, Northampton. I want to commend you for bringing this to the public comment on. But I also have a concern that was mentioned about our uh, landfill bags. I think that from here on we need to really look at that because if we're asking the community of business owners not to have those bags but are consistently taking our blue bags to the landfill, that seems like something that is the next step. So I just wanted to you know, echo another comment about that and register that as a concern for a lot of us. Is there any further comment? Okay. Um, well, well, at this point, we'll uh, I'll, I'll accept the motion to close the public forum. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And now, uh, let's accept the motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.